Well, we thought it would be smart to have a show about the Giants coaches because there are so many of you. <laughs> There's 15, as I counted today, there's 15 coaches. And then you have people like Kai Correa, the Giants bench coach and field coach. Uh, we haven't had access to you because of the pandemic. So now I get to sit next to you. I get to touch his shoulder. It's like back to normal. Thanks for doing this. No, it's, it's my pleasure. Thanks for, thanks for the idea. It's going to be a lot of fun. I think it's going to be really fun for the fans to get to know you guys more and all that you do. So let's start there as the bench coach responsible for the infield layman's terms. What is your job? Yeah, I, I, I do, uh, like you said, I, I work with the infielders. So that's like my primary focus in practice. I do a lot of teaching of team defensive fundamentals, you know, bunt bleat plays, first and thirds, cuts and relays. Um, I do in-game the defensive positioning for the infielders, uh, both in regard to right or left and the depth, and then um, kind of serve as the manager's thought partner, asking the right questions, answering the right questions, having a running dialogue. Cap does an amazing job of providing me with autonomy, um, with uh, the, the, like the venue and the feeling that I could always say anything or ask anything at any time. And so we have that running dialogue, as you see on TV, a lot, oftentimes we're in the shot. And then um, the last thing is building out the schedule, mm -hmm. whether that's spring training or workout days or pregame. And so those are my primary responsibilities. We do always see that picture on TV of you right next to Cap. We're going to get into how much you two look like each other in the uniform and the glasses in a little bit. I'm going to get to the bottom of that story. But when you are there and you are in such close vicinity with each other, is it always strategy? Do you ever make a joke? Like, is there... <laughs> Can yeah. you share that? Yeah, I mean, I think sometimes uh, the mood can be lightened uh, by like someone like Andrew Bailey, <laughs> yes. who is a more yes. humorous and loose yes. personality. Yes. Uh, Cap and I are two pretty like serious, like process-oriented people. So the, usually our conversation in the game is pretty serious. <laughs> Occasionally, like something funny happens that we have a, a commentary on, but more often than not, we we got to rely on Andrew Bailey to, to break up the, the seriousness. Yes. yes, the levity. Yes. A sense. Let's roll back to Kai Correa as a little kid in Hawaii, and when baseball became a love of yours and when you decided to make that transition from player to coach? Yeah, um, I, growing up in Hilo, uh, it's pretty well documented at this point that my grandfather and father were high school coaches and my uncle as well. And so when you grow up in a coaching family, um, that's like the, the natural point of relatability between father and son. You have those conversations, you eavesdrop on those conversations, you sit in the dugout. And so that love grew from a really early age and the, for the love of coaching just as much as playing. Um, and then when I was done playing in college, um, my ability to play help trigger my transition to coaching. <laughs> it became real clear. <laughs> yeah, it became, I always tease the guys. They always say, oh, man, you have so much experience for a young guy. I say, well, the worse you are, the sooner they make you coach. You know, and so that, that's how I got 12 seasons before the age of 33. And so, um, you know, that's, that's how that, that transition happened is that I always had that passion for the sport, but I also had that admiration for the role of being a coach. And so when you combine those two things, it was a natural dream career path. So I went to Hawaii last year to the Big Island with my husband. We celebrated our 20th anniversary, and I was really excited to go and get away, Kai, from baseball. And I couldn't because Kai was all over the news. They did all of these stories, long format stories. You were like royalty. And I was like, I can't get away from the Giants. Kai Gray is like royalty over here, which I was really proud of you, and I was really happy for you. How has your life changed back home? When you go back there, I think you, you still spend quite a bit of time yeah. over there. I, I, uh, I wouldn't <laughs> quite say royalty, but it was fun that they, they, did, like those, they did those stories. I, um, I think the, the number one way it's changed is it's kind of given me like a natural platform uh, to help continue to grow the game. Um, that community has given me so much. They were my like baseball 100 level teachers. Can you go to Hawaii and not get recognized? Yeah. <sighs> um, you know, the funny, know. yeah, I would say the funny thing about that um, is I've, I've never really been a major league coach in a non-mask era, and so I, I, I won't be able to answer. You're not quite sure. Yeah, you're not like, quite sure. It kind of looks like <laughs> I don't see the glasses. And the other fun thing is when you're from a small town in a small place, they keep you humble. Yeah. You know, they, I don't think they see the Absolutely. major league coach. They see, like, the little boy they used to coach in Little League, and so they're, they're, quick, they're quick to give you crap and, sure. and put you back in your place. You in place. And, uh, I love being, being back there for that reason as That's well. That's why I live in my hometown, an no, hour north, and it's the people I grew up with, yeah. and yeah. They'll, yeah, they'll set you straight real yeah. quick. <laughs> so, no doubt. What is it like to work with Gabe Kapler? Um, you know, I think when, when you, as you do these shows 
and you ask people what their job is and the responsibilities, each person, even though there's 15 people, is going to have a long list, right? I just gave a four bullet point list. Like, I'm incredibly fulfilled. And I think that's what it's like to work for Gabe Kapler, is he's very, very thoughtful about curating opportunities for people to not only showcase their skills, but also work on their areas of weakness yeah. um, and, and have opportunities for growth. And so he's really, really good at moving those pieces on the board and asking those questions and um, giving somebody an opportunity to present in a meeting. And, and I think that's the, like the, the most like, signature part mm -hmm. of, of his, his managerial style is, is creating opportunities for players and coaches to succeed. You know what I found interesting? We interviewed Gabe yesterday and he t talked about you know what you guys felt you did right and then he immediately went into what he felt he needed to work on for this season and I just kind of sat back and I don't feel like there's a lot of managers in Major League Baseball there could be you know I might be speaking out of turn but that would so freely admit they look at what they need to work on as well so I was curious working with him what does that mean to you that he's willing to say right out of the gate, I need to do this? I mean, that just takes all defensiveness away. Without question. Right? And I think it also teaches you like the value of being like introspective in your process. When you see the top of the food chain constantly reevaluating and iterating and thinking, I'm, I, I got to do this better, I got to do this different, it also raises the bar for you, right? So it, it makes you comfortable because he's already admitting that he does things wrong and he's flawed, mm -hmm. but it also challenges it because he's saying if he's improving his process, I better Im be improving mine. Yeah. He's gonna come back a better manager out of the off season, I better come back a better bench coach out of, yeah. out of the off season. And there's just so much strength in admitting that you have flaws. Without question. And you can't fix them unless you know you have them. Yeah. What's been your favorite part about being part of the Giants organization so far? Gosh, I think the Giants organization, the thing that's the most fun is it's a really fun blend of history and innovation right now. Right, you can have days where Barry's in the building and, and Willie's in the building and Murph's in the building, right? And, and, and you're, you're working out in the gym early in the morning under a, a, a banner that says 2010, 2012, 2014. You have that history that spans back to New York. And at the same time, we're pushing the envelope. Can we do this drill with a different machine, a different way? Right, can we wake up later? Can we do this? Can we do that? Yes, please. Can yes. wake up later? That's such a good one to add in there. And so <laughs> I think that's my favorite part about being a giant is we still honor that history. We still hold those folks and those teams with reverence. But at the same time, we're constantly pushing the envelope. Can we do things slightly different than, than, than the industry, than what's been done tradition, uh, historically? And, and that balance is a lot of fun. Yeah. All right, last one for you. I know you have to go to a game. Uh, and you got to set the story straight here for the glasses. My dad asked me if you and Gabe wear the same glasses on purpose and that you look kind of like twins. And I heard through the grapevine that Gabe copied you. And I want to know, I want to know what really happened. You know, I don't know if copy is a, like a fair word, but I, first and foremost, like, you could pick a lot worse people to get confused with or uh, people claim you look yeah. like, right? So I'm doing all right for myself in that regard. Um, the, but the, the truth, the, the fact of the matter is, is that I had the glasses first. I, 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 I wore them, you know, with the mask in the, uh, in the, in the COVID season, yes. right? And one day in spring training last year, Cap and I were talking about, hey, can you read? you know, that writing on the board. And I said, no, I can't without my glasses, but I can with my glasses. And so he tried on my glasses and coincidentally, our glasses are more different in appearance from close up, but the prescriptions are identical. Oh, how funny. And so Cap and I literally have the same glasses in regard to prescription. prescription. And so that's how we, we started the glasses thing. Okay. All right. I love it. I knew you had it first. I like to say that he copied you. I think you should just go for it. We can just get a rumor started. Kai Correa, thank you for your time. Thanks for having me. Yeah.